I'm a drum. Oh, what's the song? And he played for me. I just want to be on the other drum. So today's message centered itself on the person of Joseph and recognizing that in Joseph we found this, this unique pairing of qualities that are parts of the traits of God, the justice and the mercy of God. And we find that Joseph has gone through this situation where before he knew for sure that the story Mary was telling him was true, he was heartbroken over, uh, over Mary and he was looking to divorce her um, because the law kind of re required it. But then in the same note, he was going to do it privately so as not to shame her. He was going to follow the law and do justice, but he also wanted to be merciful. And it's this beautiful image of the traits of God. Uh, just a couple of the traits. I mean, God has a number of those, but God really reveals his justice and his mercy. What I like about this is, is God um, lets Joseph feel the same tension that um, he, God the Father, has felt the brokenness of sin, how it separates relationships. Now, Mary didn't sin, but Joseph didn't know that. And so he was experiencing what would be the brokenness of sin as though before he knew that Mary um, was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, he would have felt like he'd been cheated on or betrayed. And I love his response in this, that he was going to divorce her, but do so quietly because he was merciful. And when we look at God, we recognize that this is like a foreshadowing of the person of Jesus. Jesus really is the fullest and most perfect representation of the justice of God. Sin was dealt with by God at the cross in the death of Jesus. He was sinless and he died our death for us. So our penalty has been paid, but also... He brings in this different aspect of the mercy of God that in Christ, you and I are welcome to come back to God and be in relationship with him. So the justice and the mercy of God, it's kind of a beautiful um, mirroring. I would say Joseph has this tiny little speck of the traits of God that you can see a visible reflection of. And God has this eternal justice and merciful heart. So it's a beautiful human example of what God was intending to do. And our call in this is to obey, to obey God and to do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with him. I should have put that in the sermon, but you get it in groups because <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that in the sermon, but I do love that, that out of, I think it's Micah 6, 8, um, where it says he has shown you a man what to do, um, but to do justly, to love mercy and walk humbly with your God. I cannot believe I didn't put that in the sermon. Literally right now you're watching my face just melt off because it was, that would have worked perfectly. But anyways, um, that's what we do is we live obediently to the calling of God by, um, by not just looking to get even with people, but looking to mercifully and obediently bear the kingdom of God forward into this world. God has called you, he has reconciled you, and he has purposed you for his kingdom to come through you. So go and live obediently to what he calls you to. Even when you, like Joseph, face a situation that makes no sense, and it seems like what a strange obedience he had to do once the angel appeared to him and said, the child is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph got up and immediately obeyed. And he would have been Jesus's earthly father. He taught him and trained him um, in his life how to be a carpenter. And as he grew up, so as he grew up, so I just love this image. Do justly love mercy and obey God. Be courageous to obey God in the way he gifted and called you and then calls you out into this world. So let's dive into some questions here. Um, out of out of today's uh, teaching for your small groups. We talked a little bit about how Joseph must have felt the night he decided to divorce Mary quietly. Um, have you ever gone to bed with a difficult decision weighing on your heart and causing heartache and just being overwhelmed by the circumstance? In our devotions this week, we talked about the difficult spot that Joseph was in. What is the right way to handle a situation where someone has done wrong, but you love them? Uh, we know that Mary did nothing wrong, but before the angel appeared, Joseph didn't know that. So what is the right response? You love somebody, but you know they've done wrong. This is a short question here, question three. How did the angel greet Joseph? What did he say?
So there's an activity we do in Profession of Faith that I think is really good to do here. It's where we sit back and we actually brainstorm and name sins. We name the inside sins, which are those things you really can't see. So take a minute and name the inside sins, the hidden things, and write them on a board or something and just brainstorm them, write them all down. Then turn around and talk about how those inside sins lead to outside sin activity, um, sins that have actions. And then after you've written all this down, take these and connect them with potential consequences. Should I do a quick example of this? No example for you. Good luck. Do you agree that God did not ignore sin in giving us Jesus, but he enacted justice by punishing Jesus? What was Joseph's response to the angel's message? Malia! You better come here. I'm going to call you Malika. Yeah. Malika. All right. You're going to help me out today, all right? No, you're going to read the kids' questions. Hi, Foundry Kids. My name is Malia Colleen. And my name's Tori. We'll have some questions for the Foundry groups. And the first question is, Joseph was in a difficult situation. He thought someone he loved had betrayed him and he did something wrong. Have you ever felt that way? When the angel appeared to Joseph, he told him that Mary had done nothing wrong. She was going to have a baby who was the son of God. This was wonderful news, but Joseph probably knew that some people would not believe them. Do you think that made it hard to obey what God said? The angel told Joseph that Jesus would save people from their sins, but this didn't mean God ignored sin because of Jesus. He put the sin onto Jesus on the cross and punished Jesus for the sins of the whole world. How does that make you feel? Bye, everybody, and we'll bring this back to Eric. Thank you, Tori and Malaya. It's not as easy as it looks, is it? Wait, I said it wrong. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, I spit! I totally had a spit! Redo it all. The question one is, will there be a pastor present at CM Monday when it's a video teaching? Absolutely there will. Whenever we have a video teaching, there will be a venue pastor there who will be able to connect with you, pray with you, talk with folks if they need to talk and share. So yes, there will always be a venue pastor present at See You Monday, um, video and regular teaching nights. There will be a venue pastor there. One of the questions that came up was, will there be a menu posted for See You Monday a little bit earlier? We know some of you have food allergies and different things and would like to know sooner rather than later what the menu is going to be. Starting in January... We will be posting uh, the menus later, like towards the end of the work week, so you know coming into the weekend if you want to be at Sea on Monday for dinner as well as worship. So yes, we are getting ahead of that a little bit. Sea on Monday is going to feel a little bit different for the next two weeks, and here's why. Christmas Eve is the 24th, that's a Monday. We're going to host two services, 4 p.m. and 5.30, and we're not hosting a meal that night. So the worship space will be set up a little bit more like a Sunday morning, and you can just plan 4 p.m., 5.30, but no meal on Christmas Eve. And then when you look to New Year's Eve a week later, we will not be hosting a See a Monday service at all that week. So I'm Justin Colleen. I am the worship director slash leader, worship leader here. Uh, at Maine, and I've been here since the inception, which was 2012, 2013. Inception's so, not the Inception's right the word. word. Inception's the word. It was fruition, that's not the word. Oh yeah, inception. yeah, that's right. Inception. And not conception. And, yeah, I really like Staying. to lead people in worship, seeing people engage, uh, singing to God. Justin. And uh, the other thing I really like about it is getting to work with the musicians and the vocalists here, because we are very blessed with a lot of talent here, and getting to work with them and watch them develop and, and get better at the craft that God uh, laid on their heart to use in this life. So that's what I love about my job the most. 
All right, so we will not have groups meeting for the next two weeks, so we hope you guys have a very safe and awesome Merry Christmas uh, with loved ones and families. And make sure you come out to the Christmas party. December 21 from 6.30 to 8. So you said loved Foundry ones West. and families. Are oh, yeah. They not the same? There's a little, there's a hidden. Uh, no. With your 